since 1949, Heckler Kosh provides firearms for many military and paramilitary units with models like the MP5, including the SAS, the KMAAR, the U.S. Navy SEALs, Delta Force, HRT, Canada's Joint Task Force, number two, the German KSK, and the GSG number nine, and many other counter-terrorist and rescue team units. The Heckler Kosh MP7 German Machine Pistol 7 is a personal defense weapon chambered for the HK 4.6 by 30 millimeters. And now we could experience this with the MP7 model in the air gun community. And if you like models like the MP5, that's also available as well. The Heckler Kosh MP7 compact brake barrel this thing is a pellet one round capacity. That means one pellet at a time. 0.177 caliber, 4.5 millimeter, a trigger poundage up to 6.5 pounds. This thing has a red dot electronic sight with manual safety, a rifle steel barrel, a barrel length of 11.7, a small cocking effort of 30 pounds, a uh, weight up to 4.4 pounds, a velocity up to 490 feet per second with Picatinny rails for that flashlight, red dot, laser combination of your choice, and a beautiful adjustable stock. This thing is really small, really compact to fit in those non-compromisable places. All right, guys, welcome back to ASR. We're gonna do a quick unboxing review. So let's go ahead and open the package and see what we have. So right off the bat, we have a list stay connected with Umarex pamphlet along with the HK manual. So guys, we already know what to expect. And um, we have the beautiful MP7. We'll get a closer look at it. And we also received the red dot sight. So this is pretty cool, pretty interesting. The Heckler Kosh MP7, compact carbine, all made of polymer. This is a wonderful lightweight concept. German engineering at its finest. As you can tell, it has that ergonomical Uzi like grip with this very, very cool texture along the grip. We also have a polymer trigger guard along with a polymer trigger as well we also see some polymer buttons that actually do not function these are non-movable buttons non-functioning buttons safety manual we also have a eight slot picatinny rail system we also have a full rail system all the way to the brake we have a six slot rail system we also have a non barrel silencing device the reason why i call it a non-silencing device because it is not a silencing device but heckler kosh made it easy for you when it makes to the cocking effort makes you have a better grab a better hold of the mp7 so this is a single pellet capacity you load one pellet at a time once again and you also have these cool sling mounts on this side, as you can see, one sling mount here, one sling mount on the stock. We also can retract the stock and retract it back in, which I think this has a two slot um, rail system. So that's one and that's two. And then let's go ahead and flip it on the other side. So here we have uh, some sling mounts as well. This thing has sling mounts just about everywhere. So we have one here and we also have one on the extended stock. So you're probably wondering, how can I retract that stock back? You just lift up this little pin and retract it back in. And easy as that, right off the bat, we have some non-functioning buttons. I don't know if I mentioned that, but we do not have any more functioning buttons that actually work. We also have this pistol grip storage unit, which actually is a dummy as well, along with an eight uh, rail system. And of course the barrel silencing device that does not work. So that's 
pretty much what you see, guys. It is a beautiful concept. So let me give you a rundown on why I purchased this concept. So basically, it's a very small, very compact. You can fit this in a backpack. Most of the new generations of rifles that are coming out are real small, compact carbines that actually can fit in a backpack. What's the whole purpose of the backpack? So the backpack, for the reason, is sometimes I don't want to carry these long um, plastic boxes that take up a lot of room. So this concept here does not take up a lot of room. It is 490 feet per second. So when it comes to hunting or something like that, it will be a challenge for you since the FPS is that low. 490 feet per second and it's definitely enough to probably take down a little game something like a rabbit or something like that white tail rabbit but other than that i probably wouldn't take my chances um this is definitely for plinking when you just don't want to carry all that big equipment heavy stuff all you want to do is just plink this is one of those concepts you can definitely take i love this concept um i'm going to keep this concept and um, store this concept for good purposes. So you also have this Axion um, beautiful red dot system. This is a uh, off the wall, um, pretty cool optic solution, obviously. So uh, I'm gonna be taking this out and I'm gonna be putting it on the rail system to give a good idea how she looks with it on. So let's go ahead and put this red dot sight. On the MP7. All right, so there we have the red dot electronic sight 5H PPT rail system, and it is made in China. So you have windage and you should have elevation. So here we go. It is waterproof, shockproof, and fog proof. This thing is a pretty nice red dot. I'm not going to lie. This is pretty cool. Matter of fact, it beats me not having to buy something for it. Matter of fact, I have plenty other options for it, but um, I don't have to buy one. So this really, really uh, is a useful concept. All right, guys, really quick before we mount this red dot, I wanted to show you really quick with these caps. Make sure you save your caps. Uh, keep up with these things because this is an actual uh, key cap that can help you basically windage and elevate your red dot. So this little slot here uh, is basically to elevate windage or elevation, whichever the way the red dot is designed. And uh, that's pretty useful. You don't have to carry extra keys. You don't have to carry a screwdriver, things of that matter. And it does work, comes with a battery. Pretty nice uh, size MOA there, not too bad. It's got a nice little red uh, holographic lens so really quick let's go ahead and mount this thing so literally right off the bat you see a 3 8 on your little rail mounts make sure you separate these wide enough so we have 5 8 we want to mount it the 5 8 way so we take this 5 8 and i like to install my red dots around these uh carbines somewhere near the front but i like to give it a little space between the brake uh, I don't like mine so close, but it's up to you. It's your choice. If you want to put yours in the center, mount it in the center or mount it towards the rear. It's up to you, depending on your eye relief. Not everybody's eyes are the same, but like mine they are pretty decent. So let's go ahead and mount this thing on here. And it's really easy to mount, guys. That's just pretty much it. You know, the five eights facing down the three eights facing up as far as the little mounting um mounts and that's pretty much it right there well guys that's pretty much it um we're gonna go ahead and take this outside in the range um as you can see it looks very gorgeous we're gonna be testing out how accurate this thing is but before we do that let's take it to the chronograph test <laughs>
test. We have the Hypermax Field Line 5.2 grain pointed pellets. And then we have the domed 7.0 lead pellets. So first, let's turn on the chronograph and we're gonna be trying out the Hypermax pellets to see the full potential of the FP7. All right, now we're trying the lead pellets from Crossman 7.0. All right, guys, we have the accuracy test now. We're going to be taking 10 steps and we're going to be firing off five pellets to see what kind of grouping we can get at 10 steps. We're going to be using the Crossman 7.0 grains uh, lead pellets. Let's go ahead and load this thing up. Let's get it started. Looks like we're off to a good start. Not bad at all. She cocks really nice and easy. She's really smooth, but she's got a little hump to it. That's definitely for sure. Also not bad for a red dot. All right, we got one more try. Flyer. It's all good. I know the potential. So pretty much drilled um, three in the one spot and the other two is what you see there. So not bad for the Heckler Kosh MP7, red dot, compact rifle, carbine. <laughs> guys the last test of the day and we're going to be testing the poundage on this trigger now the box proclaims that it's a 6.5 this is coming from heckler kosh and good thing i got my trigger gauge with me and let's go ahead and test this thing and see what kind of poundage we can get on the trigger it's already on zero settings nothing funny going on and uh, it's ready to go now that's a 5.2 reset that 
reload my barrel. I can't do this in the house, guys, because I have to have it loaded. And these uh, nitro pistons, they say don't do it when you don't uh, have pellets in there. And it can mess up your pistons, something like that. So I'm not going to try it anyway. So That's a real lighter there. 4.2. <clears throat> Reset that. One more. hear all the squirrels all around me all right so we should be at zero there one more pull make sure you point this at a safe location 5.0 so the box proclaims a six and a half pounds now that's a lot lighter than what the box recommended i really like this mmp um mp7 such a nice concept very small carbine and um well let's come up to the pros and cons about this rifle all right guys we're back from the range and let's go ahead and dive straight into the cons about this product so right off the bat we can see there's a baffling system that actually is not a sound suppressing system all this does is just helps you have a better grip when you break the barrel to insert the pellet just makes the caulking effort much easier. Now you have the option to go ahead and take this thing off and you will have a small skinny little barrel, but that's up to you. But it could really, really, really help in that case of situation. Now, um, the fake buttons as well. The, they have, you can see they have molded buttons uh, in the system. They're pretty much, they don't move or function at all. So um, that's one of uh, the 490 feet per second that's what it claims on the box, lead pellets, and it's pretty much close to that. Um, what else? Uh, there is no pellet compartment. So usually almost on every um, other concept, you really do not see none of that. So that's just something to bring up uh, just in case in future references. There's no iron sights. We do have a red dot reticule that works wonderfully, but I would highly suggest maybe iron sights on this small typical compact model. Now you can go with the red dot if you like, but I highly suggest maybe some iron sights with this and probably be a little bit more accurate, more challenging in a way. So um, what else we can look at? Um, it also has fake compartments. Now this could have been used as some kind of pellet holder or maybe an Allen wrench for, you know, setting some kind of iron sight or scope or anything like that. Anything that can be useful as far as tools uh, lead pellets or anything like that extra few pellets just in case you're in the middle of nowhere and you got something you know who knows you never know and it says it has a 6.5 trigger now to me that's kind of awfully pretty heavy for a small little carbine but you can actually probably adjust this maybe some way somehow i actually have no idea um this is barely an unboxing product so i haven't got into details on how to do this with this so that's pretty much on the cons Let's move on to the pros. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the pros, my favorite part of the channel. So let's talk about the good things about the Heckler Kosh MP7. So earlier in the video, I mentioned that the MP7 was a small compact carbine that could actually fit in a duffel bag, backpack, etc. Now, if it's a backpack, I highly recommend a full size backpack. Well, in here we have a duffel bag and guess what's inside? the MP7 from Heckler Kosh. And uh, basically you already know, you see it as throughout the day. So the MP7 from Heckler Kosh is a wonderful small compact carbine. So right off the bat, when you grab one of these, you notice the sleek polymer lightweight of 4.4 pounds. That's right, only 4.4 pounds in a carbine. Now that is very, very lightweight. There's obviously more product out there that's very lighter than this. Um, but it's whatever suits you, you already so, know. Let's talk about more pros about it. It has a rifle barrel and from the break all the way to the fake suppression has 11 inches of rifle steel barrel. You have the option to take the suppression off and just have a barrel, but I advise you to leave this probably on so you can have that torque to break it. And it comes with braille mounts. Uh, it is a brake barrel and it comes with rail mounts. 
that is very sufficient when you're hunting or plinking at night. You want to uh, mount various optics. You have that option. And if you want to, you can probably mount on some of this suppression around these clear areas. So, um, it also comes with a red dot system. That's pretty cool. I'll, if you're hunting, I'll highly recommend a scope or maybe a scope with a small significant power dial. Nothing too big for this model, a perfect size. It's up to you. And it does come with a two position slide stock and the second position, obviously, there we have it. And to collapse it back, you have to basically pull on this little pin and push down. But not too aggressive, but just enough to make sure she slides in pretty good. So it comes with a red dot. And also don't forget that it does come with batteries, but do not forget to probably pick up some more, read the manual. Before you go pick up some batteries, do not get the wrong batteries. So um, it also is a very economic air gun, one pellet at a time, very economic. You don't go through all your inventory. You don't run through pellets like crazy with this model. So it's very economic. So, um, and it comes with sling mounts. It comes with sling mounts on both sides of the stock. As you can see, there's one here, one there. And on this other side, you can see one in pretty much the same position. Now, this thing can shoot up to 500 feet per second with a 5.2, 5.1 grain. It all depends in the grain you feel confident in. So um, over 500 feet per second, that's pretty good. This thing is an overall of 22 inches and a half. So this model back here, this model is up to 46 to 45 inches in total from the barrel to the stock. 22 and a half cuts all that. So you do not compromise so much room with this thing. Like I said, if you're just having fun or maybe you have the concept of maybe you want to hunt with it, maybe small game, some birds, some rabbits. I definitely would probably give you that with this model, but anything other than that, I wouldn't highly recommend at all. But I would say this is a fun plinker. So guys, like I said, if you want to carry this thing around, it's so compact. So uh, I can't talk enough about it. So let's go ahead and move on. So, um, uh, it has a 5.0 trigger. Now, the factory said it had a 6.5, but the model came back with a 5.0. So it is a pound lighter. So that's another beneficial part to this concept. And um, that's pretty much it. I think that covers about everything. Now, if there's something that I missed, if there's something you want to talk about, if there's anything that I need to address on this model, please let me know. I'll write that in the comments below. Please write a comment below. I want to thank each and every one of my subscribers today for sticking in there, hanging on to my channel, having a lot of confidence in my channel. And I want to thank all the other channels that expose my channel um, to other viewers. I really thank you so much, guys. You guys know who you are. Uh, all my veterans overseas, all the individuals that fought during the war, all the veterans. I want to thank you so much. Um, to all my subscribers, all the veterans, each and every one of you, God bless you and uh, long live the Republic. Until next time on Airstream.